let's talk about Lola Bunny. Hey, kings, queens, and non-binary beings. So, if you haven't heard, there's an upcoming sequel to Space Jam, a 1996 family comedy starring Michael Jordan and the Looney Tunes. The sequel, starring LeBron James, recently revealed the designs of some of the tunes, and needless to say, people weren't happy about a certain bunny's design. That bunny was Bugs Bunny. I'm kidding, obviously it was Lola Bunny. Immediately the changes were clear. Smaller chest, less defined arms and legs, and a looser, less revealing uniform. Now, unlike most people who are angry about the redesign, I didn't have an issue with this because I was into her or her being sexy. I've kind of always been a fan of characters like Lola, smart and strong female characters who are also very beautiful, like Jessica Rabbit from Who Friend Roger Rabbit, Miss Bellum from The Powerpuff Girls, and Carmen Sandiego and Julia Argent from The Carmen Sandiego Movie. It's not a big issue I have, and I don't even think the redesign is that egregious. Lola being pretty, but also the most capable player on the team behind Michael Jordan, was pretty awesome. I don't know how the sequel will handle Lola's athleticism, but I do know that it's kinda messed up that Hollywood seems to keep wanting to push the idea onto young girls that you can either be pretty or you can be smart and strong. I mean, look at the Powerpuff Girls reboot. Miss Bellum was removed because the crew behind the show apparently didn't like the message she sent. However, in the same episode they had Miss Bellum, aka Sarah Bellum, shown as having left the mayor, two fashion-based supervillains were introduced and the mayor had to save incapacitated Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. So a smart, feminine woman isn't sending the message you want, but two supervillains who only care about fashion in an episode where the title heroines are incapacitated sends the exact message you want makes perfect sense. Now look at Carmen Sandiego's Julia Arjan. Even when she has her appearances where she's very feminine, she's memorable for her intelligence. This isn't to say that tiny hourglass figures are all that should be in media aimed at young girls and that's it, but I don't think we should raise other body types up by trying to throw away this one, because it does exist. For other things, I would be completely down with having different body types, like for example, She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. In S-Pop, we've got a few different body types and every character is very pretty. For me, what makes S-Pop different from Space Jam 2 in this instance is that S-Pop isn't a sequel, it's a reboot. People, or at least most people, weren't expecting the characters to look the same or similar to their 80s counterparts. With a sequel even this many years later, it'd be better to have Lola look the same or similar and be her unapologetically strong self all the same. This isn't even to mention that the desexualization of characters seems to almost always be boobs are bad, which is dumb because women have breasts and they aren't inherently sexual. Just because people sexualize this body part doesn't mean it's not a very real and present part of the female human body. Look at it this way. A bunch of people sexualize feet and legs, but you don't see characters being redesigned to not have them. Butts are sexualized all the time, but characters aren't redesigned without them either. These are all parts of the body that exist, and we shouldn't let people sexualize them be why we omit them from media. Besides, it's not like Lola's design on its own was what made people like her. She wasn't sexy, she was just drawn that way. Literally. It was her being animated to do sexy poses that made her a fan fake. And we shouldn't be teaching kids that their bodies or intelligence and strength determine one another because they don't. For this design, I wanted to incorporate not only the original and new designs, but see if I could incorporate the look of Lola from the Looney Tunes show. With Lola's original design, you'll see that the bottom left image is a little curvier than the bottom right, which is a shot directly from the movie. That's fan art, but I still wanted to include it as a reference, especially since that's the only full body of Lola I could find. At the top right, we have Lola's redesign, which, like I said, I don't hate, but I would like to change some things like giving her back her more defined legs. Now, you've heard what bothered me most about the redesign, let's talk about what I specifically liked and didn't like about the design. The pattern on the feet? Liked it. I combined it with Looney Tunes show Lola, and it kind of made it look like she was wearing a weird slipper, but I still think it looks good. I see that they wanted to give her foot patterns a bit of a softer look compared to Bugs, but I think a closer pattern with just barely softer details wouldn't be much of an issue, especially considering Bugs has pronounced toes and Lola doesn't, already making them look similar but different since they're obviously different genders. I did give her a bit of a chest, but not even really as much as the original. I also brought her hips in a little, but I'm fine with them being the way they were. I also like that the lighter fur down her front doesn't go too far to the sides of her neck like the originals. It just makes it more obvious that her neck isn't fully that light color. I tried to make her look a little more muscly in the arms, but I don't really draw muscles that much, so it kind of just looks like she has thicker arms, but it's definitely intended to be muscle. 
In the original, Lola is the only toon good at basketball at first. I took this to mean that she must work out or do some kind of exercise regularly, so I felt like it fit her more to have arms that were more defined and less noodle-like. I like that Lola's hair seemed to stay the same and just got a touch darker, so I tried to capture a kind of platinum blonde between the original and new designs. I love the little compression short thingies under her uniform shorts, but I just made them a little more hidden under her uniform. As for the basketball shorts themselves, I think I made them a little shorter, but since the new design doesn't really have knees, that's also something I don't really like, I can't tell. They're definitely a couple inches longer than the original design though. The jersey is definitely shorter. I wasn't the biggest fan of Lola in a sort of sports bra in the original, but I did like the idea that she would have a modified uniform to make her stand out, being the only girl on the team. I like that the holes of the gloves are like flat rings versus full on Sonic the Hedgehog looking rings. It kind of feels like gloves a little bit more unique to the tunes rather than just copies of Mickey Mouse's gloves. I like the change in eyelashes and I definitely kept that. The old ones felt kind of childish, if that makes sense. Like I look at old Lola and LTS Lola and I don't think the three long eyelashes suit movie Lola at all. I'm definitely more of a fan of the eyeliner look with the one lash on each eye. Lola feels like the kind of girl who would do the bare minimum in makeup, probably because she already knows she looks good. And that brings me to my next point, which is the eyeshadow. It was more so just dark orangish red fur over Lola's eyes, but like I said, I think the less makeup it looks like Lola has on, the better. I love that Lola's eyes are a darker blue-green rather than the kind of icy seafoam green they were before. That, next to her new blue uniform, makes her eyes pop, which works well since her eyes are probably going to be half-lidded for most of the movie anyway. I don't actually like the way they seem to have handled the ponytail. In the original, Lola's ears just kind of went wherever. I really liked LTS Lola's ears, with the backs of the ears being at the top always. The ears fall down nicely and don't need to randomly sway every which way. Speaking of, does anyone remember that one Nick show, Every Which Way? What'd you think of it? Let me know in the comments. One thing I liked a lot was that Lola's teeth are a little bit bigger in the redesign. Obviously not the size of Bugs' teeth, but certainly bigger. I made them a little longer to really drive home that she's a bunny. Also, Lola looked kind of weird having such short but wide teeth. Like, have you seen rabbit teeth? Those things are thin and they are long. I think Lola's height was pretty good too. Lastly, we don't get to see Lola's new tail or if it even changed, but I hope they do something kind of like LTS Lola's tail and make it more rabbit-like and less cotton ball-like. Those were my thoughts and I'd love to hear what you guys think. Do you like Lola's old design or new design more? Why? Are you indifferent? I hope you guys enjoyed this video either way. I do have a fun speed paint with Xanthi and Thistle May coming up which I think you guys will like. And then after that we have basically a filler speed paint, not gonna lie. I'm making use of some AP work I have to do. But soon after that, there's gonna be some really good news that I can't wait to share. All three of my commission spots are still open, so if you're interested, make sure to check out that info in the description and pinned comment. You'll also find links to my Teespring stores with a code for 10% off. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.